hands out. Ty Sheridan and Nicholas Cage. an extraordinary film. Uh, thank you all. Uh, it, you know, the performances top to bottom are amazing, so starting with these two, but everyone, can you talk about how you cast the film? Yeah, um, you know, we had, we had great actors, uh, uh, Nick and Ty joining us, um, uh, actors I've, I've been a fan of Nick my whole life, um, we've grown up watching his films and just admired every genre that he's approached and every challenge that he's uh, taken so boldly, and then Ty, who I first saw in Tree of Life, and then... Um, I was in the editing room on, on Mud and was seeing him kind of come into adolescence and that and I was like, oh, let's take some steps into manhood with this movie. And then um, so much so so much regional talent, uh, local talent, people that um, you know, John and Carmen, our casting directors, really um, helped uh, pave the way for a very authentic and unique approach to casting, finding um, uh, you know local actors that that I've uh, that I love and admire, Adrian Mishler and Heather Cockrell. <laughs> And, uh, and so many, um, and then also looking in places where actors uh, didn't know they were, they didn't even know they were actors, and they were just wonderful people, uh, like Brian Mays of, of Sam's Barbecue, uh, uh, and uh, he played Junior in the movie, the, the kind of foreman of the work crew, and, and you know, going in for barbecue, and you just see the charisma, just oozing out of the sauce, you know, uh, and then um, uh, day labor centers, and some kind of non-traditional places, um, it's worth noting that uh, Gary Poulter, the actor that played Ty's father in the movie, was you know they, uh, John and Carmen met him uh, at a bus stop downtown, and um, really just brought a an incredible villainous, horrific character to life that was a very difficult part of the casting process, trying to find that piece that that, that, that spoke to us with the sympathy, not just um, not just with a lot of the, the villainous tendencies, but um, and, you know he did a pretty remarkable. Uh, Workforce. That was the first time he'd, he'd acted in a film. Woo! For both of you, the decision to be involved with this film, easy, hard, you want to talk about it? Right away, I, I knew I wanted to make the movie. I, I took about a year off and uh, trying to find that 100 point script, trying to find a, a script where I didn't feel like I had to act, where I could just be. And I read Joe. And that was it. I knew right away this was the, what I'd been waiting for. And then when you know, David wrote me a nice letter, and I've been a fan of his movies, so it was a perfect, uh, a perfect choice for me. And then I came out here, we shot as you know in Austin. Spent a, a couple days driving around with David, got to know him a little bit, got to know his process, which I was very blown away by. And he would invite you know, a little bit of improvisation, and sharing some ideas and some memories in my own life. So then I, when I got the part, I came back again, and then I met Ty, and we read through some scenes together, and I knew right away he was, he was really somebody that I could have that on-screen relationship with, and the rest is, here we are now. Yeah, I, I remember reading this script, and I just thought, man, I, I want to be in that movie so bad. Uh, but, you know, I did, I, I did my first film when I was 11 years old, and then I did a film when I was 14. Um, and then I didn't do anything else until this, and, and, you know, I was just looking for that one that you can't say no to. Questions from the audience? Right in the front. Yeah, um, I, I was just wondering, how, how much of the cast were, like, just sort of professional acting content? Or just uh, guys who just found out now and said, hey, do you want to be in Washington? The question is, is how much of our cast was professional and how much of it was just people we tapped on the shoulder and invited into our movie. Uh, you know, if I did my job right, you wouldn't know who's who. Um, I've heard of this guy, Nicholas Cage, has seen him a couple of times, you know. But, but hopefully the idea is that we, you know, it's a seamless process and even the ones that, you know, my next door neighbor, AJ, plays the sheriff uh, in the movie. Uh, so, you know, you, yeah. 
think it's just cool. Part of my process is just like living life and seeing who says what and who has that look in their eye. And you know, I lean across the fence and talk to them and get a, get a little advice from time to time from AJ. So I thought, who better to sit across the dining room table from Nick and have him talk shit? So. <laughs> That was, in fact, my very first time skinning a deer. No rehearsal. It was just, don't stop. Just, you know, hit the ground running production of Skin a Deer. And that's what we did. So there was one in the visiting. That's a, that's a good, did you say anyone that was in the movie or had, there's a lot of people here tonight that did, uh, that did work on the movie, a lot of actors and, and technicians that, that, that joined us in the, in the circus, um, so yeah, anybody that was here, part of the movie, there's more than I could name, so stand up and wave at yourself. <laughs> sequence as ethically and humanely as possible and so we just got two very playful dogs and then added horrific sound effects and <laughs> <laughs> they were nice faith the dog uh, nick's dog uh, had never acted before that was her debut <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, david could you you said you read the story a long time ago when it was six or seven pages what was it then that made you want to make a movie of it, and why would you make that movie now? now the question is, uh, what was it about the story when I read the novel that appealed to me, and why now? Um, you know, I, I just love, I'm a big fan of Larry Brown's work, and his writing is so cinematic, as it said, and uh, it just felt like a great, uh, and, you know, even though these guys aren't related by blood, it's just a great father-son story, and that was something that was really important to me, to kind of find that, that mentor dynamic, and, and you know, um, uh, and look to it like look, look to it in that way, and it's also at the same time that you know it, it works on the dramatic level as a novel, but it also works as a contemporary western, as a tale of outlaws and redemption, and um, and things that I really like to one of the movies for. Even watching it tonight, I was thinking, well, it dabbles in drama, it dabbles in action, it dabbles in horror, um, and it, I think all that was the first seeds when reading the book that really jumped out to me. Um, and, and as far as now, you know, it's a difficult it's a difficult climate to make a movie like this. You know, we're really lucky to have. Lionsgate and the Roadside Attractions getting this movie out there because it's not, you know, your obvious blockbuster fanfare. Um, it's uh, it's something that deals with dark material, and I needed to be at a point in my career where I could uh, deal with that subject matter confidently. And, and um, as much as that story has followed me through my career, it's it's now that I felt like I was at a point, a pivot point, where I could I could stand proud and um, and, and make that responsibly. Yes, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, the woman, the woman is going to answer, yeah. Um, in the scene where your uh, mom's opening your session with dance, I was wondering if I, uh, Nicholas could give us a live demonstration of that. <laughs> a, a live demonstration of the anatomy of a cool face. <laughs> it happened, it happened, I guess, like, wow, so I'm 50, so I was, was probably about 40, 40 years ago, I saw a Marlboro Man commercial on TV, and the guy that was the star of the Marlboro Man commercial kept looking like that. You know, he had that squint and that smile. Like, well, what, what, what is that? Is that is that the anatomy of a cool face? Well, how do you do that? And I was like, well, you just okay, make, make a face of pain and then smile. <laughs> I wish 
I wish we could keep going, but actually we have to turn the house. We still have a lot more going on today. But for those of you that have badges, film, gold, platinum, South by Southwest registrants, David and Nick are going to be talking tomorrow uh, in the Austin Convention Center. Actually, Interactive can go too. 18 ABCD, 1230 tomorrow, an hour conversation with them. So don't miss it. And the movie comes out April 11th. Thank you.